Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So, in this video, I will be explaining you what is called as gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, this gastroesophageal reflux disease, it is just a phenomenon whenever the gastroesophageal reflux, which is a physiological uh, reflux, when it exceeds the normal number of uh, refluxes or the normal limit. So, what actually happens in gastroesophageal reflux disease is, so the, uh, the esophagus which is bathed in the uh, acid like gastric acid most of the time and that changes the you know like you know, uh, the epithelium of the esophagus and over a period of time. So, there will be so many uh, pathophysiological changes that will happen which will give rise to gastro uh, gastroesophageal reflux disorders. So, as you can see here, so the gastroesophageal reflux disease is simply referred as GERD. So, in order to understand the you know uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease properly, we really need to understand the gastrointestinal tract first. As you can see like you no know, gastrointestinal tract it uh, runs from the mouth all the way to the anus and the thing that is colored here is the esophagus. You can see like esophagus it is connected to the stomach here and the stomach in turn is connected to small intestine and then into the large intestine. So, what happens is the junction between the stomach and the small um, esophagus is a, a lower esophageal sphincter and this lower esophageal sphincter as you can see in this particular figure here, see the lower esophageal sphincter it is closed most of the time and that is because which is a basically it is a lower esophageal high pressure zone. So, because because of this high pressure what happens most of the time there will be closure of the lower, lower esophageal sphincter. So, because of this what happens only when the food enters into the esophagus when the pressure builds up there that is when the this uh, sphincter will open up and the content will get into the um, uh, stomach. So, that means what happens is so we really need to uh, uh, keep this lower esophageal sphincter closed most of the time and it is a one way valve that means it has to open into the uh, 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 into the stomach rather than stomach content getting back into the esophagus. So, it is a kind of one way valve. So, that means this is a plumbing mechanism where a pipeline is connected, esophagus is connected, there is a valve which is one way and then the stomach is a reservoir and the food is collected in the stomach. Now, as you can see uh, here is the stomach. So, uh, stomach uh, see the, the, the picture is uh, depicting the normal uh, person, uh, the acid is bathed here. So, it is there in the stomach and also note that this uh, whenever we eat food, we really need to keep our stomach like half empty or maybe like you no know, one fourth empty. The reason for that is so stomach has to gastric contraction has to happen and when the gastric contraction happens that means there will be sufficient space for the digestion process to go on. So, that means because the acid has to mix up with the food and when that happens the digestion proper uh, uh, um, digestion is going on properly. So, what actually happens in the low, uh, gastroesophageal uh, disease is as you can see here in the second uh, picture. So, this is the GERD here gastroesophageal reflux disease. So, the acid that is there in the stomach it is uh, moving into the esophagus as you can see there is a change in the color of the esophagus in the lower esophageal sphincter because the backflow of the acid and the stomach contents into the esophagus causes heartburn and it basically it changes the uh, it, it causes the mucosal damage in the esophagus. So, that will give rise to what is called as uh, esophagitis. So, why why actually this happens? So, wh what is the reason for this gastroesophageal reflux disease? Why there is more than uh, no, normal uh, number of gastroesophageal reflexes are going on? In order to understand that we really need to know like um, what are the what is the etiology for uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Before we get in there, let us understand further more in this particular figure here. As you can see the GERD here, so the acid is moving back into the esophagus. So, that means whenever there is increase in the pressure in the stomach. So, this is a, then in the stomach like you no know, there is a normal pressure which is present especially when we eat food. So, because the food is kind of like you no know, stomach is kind of expanded and obviously, the pressure builds up there in the stomach also. So, when the, when this kind of things will happen right. So, that means there will be increased pressure on the lower esophageal sphincter and this lower esophageal sphincter if it is not strong enough. So, it will open up and the content of the stomach can go into the esophagus. Okay. So, the acid and it will go back into the esophagus so the stomach content sometimes the duodenal content will also go like bile, bile acids all that reaches to the esophagus this kind of issues will happen. Let us see further. 
So, as you can see here is the another figure for uh, stomach. So, esophagus we have fundus of the stomach and then see inside the stomach like you know, we have ruges and you now it is the you know, that is where the digestion process is going on. So, uh, now what are, what are the symptoms for uh, um, gastroesophageal reflux disorder? So, the symptoms for gastroesophageal reflux disease is the most common one is the heartburn and as you can see there is a heartburn. So, heartburn is uh, basically it is referred as like pyrosis. So, the pyrosis it is uh, constant heartburn like it happens uh, in uh, GERD patients like most frequently this is one of the most common sign that you see in uh, GERD. So, heartburn and then the uh, patients will have regurgitation like the regurgitation of food material present in the stomach or coming from the duodenum and also the acidic content is getting into the esophagus sometimes it comes into the mouth. That is what that is another symptom which is commonly seen in uh, uh, gastroesophageal uh, in GERD patients and also patients might have uh, experienced dysphagia. Dysphagia for the liquids, dysphagia for the solids. So, this dysphagia basically it is difficulty in swallowing the food, difficulty in swallowing the water that kind of issues can be seen and dysphagia is uh, one of the kind of like uh, later stages this happens because use uh, whenever esophagus is uh, uh, undergoing uh, mu inflammation, mucosal damage is going on. Uh, it is healed by structure formation and then that structure basically it, it makes uh, esophagus difficult to open and that is when the dysphagia signs and symptoms can happen. So, wh what else uh, we have? What all the other signs that we are going to see? Patients will, some of the patients will experience coughing and wheezing especially at the night time when they lay down and uh, when the gastric content coming into the uh, esophagus and then coming into the larynx and that kind of thing. So, it can lead to uh, coughing and wheezing process patients might, might experience sore, sore throat, hoarseness of the voice because constantly acid is coming into the mouth uh, the, the, so that can and also it can damage, it can lead to mucosal uh, damage to the uh, pharynx uh, can lead to sore throat, it can lead to laryngitis that can change the voice, hoarseness of the voice can be seen and sometimes it can lead to middle ear infection. So, the infection of the middle ear one of the thing that we need to rule out is uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. And also most uh, interestingly like the acid as the acid is coming into the mouth especially during sleep time. So, what happens is it can damage the enamel of the teeth, the enamel of the teeth can be damaged and that can lead to uh, teeth sensitivity, sensitivity to the acidic content or something like that. And also it can damage the um, uh, gums also, there can be erosion of the gum, so it can lead to gum bleeding. So, this kind of issues can happen in uh, GERD patients. So, uh, now, let us see like what all the GERD patients typically they have numerous daily episodes of symptomatic uh, reflux including heartburn, water brush or sore taste in the mouth, night time coughing, aspiration, some patients will have pneumonia, pneumonitis, bronchospasm, laryngitis, voice changes including hoarseness of the voice. There are lot of signs and symptoms here for uh, pa uh, patients who are having GERD. Now, let us move on to see what all the causes for GERD, what, what, what actually causes this GERD. So, the one of the most common cause for the GERD is transient relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. This is one of the most common cause of GERD like you now as I told you so the lower esophageal sphincter it is a one way valve. So, that means it has to open up into the stomach rather than stomach content going coming back into the esophagus it does not open up in the backward because it is a one way valve right. So, the stomach is a reservoir, esophagus is a plumbing line and the valve is there between the esophagus and the reservoir that is the stomach. So, the stomach content should not come back into the esophagus. So, here what happens this, this uh, lower esophageal sphincter it is kind of relaxed. So, relax, transient relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter is the most common uh, cause for GERD and other causes can be like permanent relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter it can happen. So, and also they can be increase in the uh, gastro in increase in the abdominal pressure or increase in the intra gastric pressure is increased because of the expansion of the uh, stomach. So, that can also contribute to GERD, but most importantly transient relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. So, now let us move on let us move on to see what is what actually is the what what are the causes for transient relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. So, this can be caused because of the consumption of coffee too much consumption of alcohol 
too much uh, consumption of chocolate, fatty meals that is like basically fried foods, uh, medication certain medications like beta agonist, nitrates, calcium channel blockers, anticholinergics, hormones like progesterone, uh, nicotine like you no know, smoking can also lead to transient relaxation of lower risk of agile sphincter. Now, what else causes uh, 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 GERD like what are the other causes for GERD other than the transient relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter. So, other causes can be like you no know, delayed gastric emptying. So, delayed gastric emptying is it means when the uh, food is accumulating in the stomach and too much food is eaten and it is taking more than the normal time for the gastric emptying to be happening. That means, there is a more gastric pressure which is building up that can lead to back pressure into the lower uh, into the use of agar. So, that can also contribute to GERD. Now, other causes for the GERD can be in you know, obesity as a contributing factor. Why? Because as the obesity happens like intra abdominal pressure can build up and that can contribute to uh, um, uh, GERD that is gastroesophageal reflux disease and also other cause can be obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea is commonly seen in people who are overweight and obese and specially morbidly obese pe uh, people. So, they can have obstructive sleep apnea and there is uh, the, so the people uh, having this kind of uh, issue can also suffer from uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, let us move on to see like now what all the complications of gastroesophageal reflux disorder. So, the very first complication that I would like to explain here is the use of ascites. What, what is actually the use of ascites? So, whenever the uh, no, acid gets into the uh, uh, esophagus, lower esophagus, distal esophagus and as it is moving on to the like middle part and to, to the proximal part of the esophagus. So, all this uh, esophagus is bathed in the uh, acidic content or the as a content present in the stomach is coming into the esophagus. It can lead to mucosal damage, esophageal mucosal damage and that is what is referred inflammation of esophagus which is referred as esophagitis. Uh, so, that is what is a esophagitis. Now, uh, as this esophagitis happens, so it can lead to deep injury to the esophagus so, and this deep injury it will be healed by fibrosis and that fibrosis it can lead to stricture as you can see in the picture. So, the healing by fibrosis can lead to so stricture formation and the stricture formation it can lead to uh, dysphagia. Dysphagia means like you no know, difficulty in swallowing water, difficulty in swallowing the food. Uh, so, that is basically dysphagia. Stricture can lead to dysphagia there. And also, so the other the, uh, issues with gastroesophageal reflux disease is uh, uh, teeth erosion and uh, bad breath. As you can see like you no know, uh, teeth erosion and bad blood, you can see the picture here. So, the enamel of the teeth can be eroded and also the gum erosion as you can see erosion of the gum can be seen and that is an indication of gastroesophageal reflux uh, disease. So, other than this, so what happens when the when the, con, when the esophagus is constantly bathed in uh, uh, acidic content or the acid coming from the stomach or the stomach contents bile, bile acids, duodenal content coming into the esophagus, what happens is slowly it changes the uh, epithelium of the esophagus. Normally, the esophagus has a squamous uh, epithelium. So, now it will be converted into columnar epithelium. So, stratified squamous epithelium into columnar epithelium change. This is what is referred as a Barrett esophagus and this is a kind of metaplasia uh, that is a change in the type of the cells going on especially in the distal esophagus. So, that is what is a Barrett esophagus and this can contribute to in future to esophageal adenocarcinoma. As you can see here in the picture, so the esophageal adenocarcinoma is the uh, cancerous condition that can be because of Barrett esophagus and that is in turn because of uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease which is not attended in time, not treated in time. So, uh, what all the prevention and treatment aspects that we have, how to prevent gastroesophageal reflux disease and what we really have, what, what we have to do when this disease actually happens. So, the prevention and the treatment. So, as you can see the most important preventive uh, aspect that we need to do is lifestyle changes. Now, avoid foods that causes lower esophageal sphincter relaxation because the most common cause for uh, GERD is the lower esophageal transient relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter and any food that causes transient relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter you really need to avoid that. That means like no you need to avoid tea, coffee, alcohol, chocolate, 
fried foods like fatty foods acidic foods like you no know, citrus fruits or something like that and spicy food so all this kind of things need to be avoided because these are the things that can actually transiently relax lower esophageal sphincter and predispose to gastroesophageal reflux disease so we really need to know, uh, do that and then uh, furthermore uh, reduce refined foods and sugary foods so the refined foods and sugary foods actually what indirectly what they cause they will do uh, cause the overweight they will cause uh, obesity and also they increase the acid output from the stomach that's why we, it is helpful if we reduce refined foods we refuse uh, reduce uh, sugary foods and also avoid eating full stomach and eat early dinner 2 to 3 hours before uh, bed so this is most important like you no know, whenever we eat food we need to make sure we need to know our capacity our stomach capacity how much it can accommodate and uh, if you know the full capacity of your stomach we really need to reduce it to half like you no know, uh, the normally our stomach should be half empty or like at least one fourth or one third of the stomach should be empty so that means there will be sufficient space in the stomach for the digestion process for the gastric contraction to happen mix the food with the acidic content and then help in the digestion process that means uh, uh, we really need to keep our stomach half empty or uh, keep one third of the stomach empty or one fourth of the stomach empty there is some space so make sure there is some space in the stomach for the digestion to happen and also most importantly we are it is important to eat food like 2 to 3 hours before uh, going to the bed that means we have 2 to 3 hours of gap from the time that we eat and uh, like now we ate dinner uh, to the time that we sleep so that means there is a partial digestion that's going on there and thereby the reflux uh, is prevented so that is another important thing and also increase alkaline foods by adding more vegetables more green leaf vegetables because these are the foods that can neutralize the acidic content and thereby and also it uh, although it delays the gastric emptying but make sure that the acid is all mixed with the alkaline content present in the green leaf vegetables and also another thing is like reduce weight so because obesity overweight sleep apnea and uh, obstructive sleep apnea all these can be contributing factor for gastroesophageal reflux disease so it is good to reduce weight that can help in preventing uh, GERD now avoid uh, NSAIDs like diclofenac, ibuprofen, aspirin and all this. So this pain killing medications need to be avoided because um, they can increase the acid output in the stomach and predispose to gastroesophageal reflux disease and reduce uh, stress. So reduction of the stress is important here. Why? Because so as we reduce stress, so we basically uh, decrease the acid output in the stomach and thereby decrease the chances of GERD. Now the coming to so what, what happens if all these like you no know, lifestyle medic uh, changes done or like you no know, patient is having uh, this issue like it's not no only the lifestyle changes is not helping at that time what we do is uh, we put the patients on H2 receptor uh, blockers that is uh, 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 they will put them on antacids as I written here we give antacids we give H2 receptor blockers we give proton pump inhibitors uh, to these patients. Now, even if medication, uh, if it is not helping a patient is then there is a, we go into surgical uh, treatment. So, there are some surgical options available. I have written some of the surgical options that are available here like Nissan fund application and then we have laparoscopic anti-reflux uh, surgery and we have sleeve gastrectomy. These are the things that we do in uh, treating uh, advanced cases of GERD uh, gastroesophageal reflux disorder. So, overall what happens here is we really need to make sure that we prevent GERD, we prevent gastroesophageal reflux disease by doing lifestyle changes. That is the most important thing. We really need to be disciplined in what we are uh, eating. We need to be disciplined in the timing of our eating, the quantity of food that we are eating and the type of food that we are consuming. All these things play a great role in uh, preventing GERD in our lives. Okay, so, this is all about GERD. I hope this video has helped you in understanding what actually is the GERD uh, in a simple way. So, I'm, uh, I, uh, so th that's about it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to this uh, channel, so kindly subscribe to this channel so that you get regular uh, updates and notifications. So, I will see you in my next video. Till then, you take care. Bye.